Okay, this is going to be the first video where we actually start diving into the beginner series. And in this one, it's going to, I don't know what, if we're going to get a really do much in terms of code, but more so kind of I'll be trying to explain this to where it hopefully comes out to be very clear. So to give you an example of what I'm going to be talking about, let's go ahead and play with two players and we're going to set play online. We're just going to do as a listen server. I'm going to just choose new editor window to load them up in, well, two separate windows. So currently, as you can see, you know, I walk into this cube here and it's moving on the one on the server there. It's kind of hard to do, but it didn't do it when I did with the shot. So let me try to actually really get it to move so you can see it better. You can see it. I'm kicking it all around on the server on the right side, but you can't see anything that's moving it. But if I shoot it, it moves on the client and not the server. But when I walk on the client, you can see there's some collision there. Like the, it still thinks the uh, the client thinks the box is where it's supposed to be, where I'm looking at, but the server doesn't know that the box moved. So it's not allowing us to move forward and through where it thinks the box is, where the collision on the server is happening. So the way the movement kind of works in Unreal Engine, and this is kind of somewhat how you should set it up to work with other things such as shooting and all that, is when I press the W key to move, I, on the client, I move forwards. And then I tell the server, okay, hey, I'm walking forwards. So the server then goes and performs the same kind of thing and replicates that down to all of the clients. Because if we just pressed the walk key, W, and told and didn't move our, ourselves and told the server, hey, I want to move forwards, and then the server moves us forwards, well, that would allow for quite a bit of input delay. So it wouldn't be, when I press W to move forward, there would be a delay between I pressing the key and us actually moving forwards. And it would be really quite unpleasant. So because the way we're actually able to move into this box and all that kind of stuff on the client and have it being affected on the server is because we are telling the server that, hey, I am trying to move. So I'm moving into this box. So everything collision related happens on the server as well. Now the reason it's not happening for the projectiles, when I shoot, so let me shoot the box and have it fling across. That is because the projectiles are running solely on the client. So if I move forwards, I'll walk right into an invisible box like so, but the box is there on the server. So what would have to happen is you would have to have some sort of RPC call to let the server know, hey, I am shooting the projectile. And then you would have the server spawn the projectile as well and do all that kind of fancy mumbo jumbo. So let's go ahead and set ourselves up so we can at least see the other client. So what we can do is we go to first person CPP, blueprints, first person character, open full blueprint editor. And if we find our mesh 1P, this is our first person mesh, just the arms here. And we search for owner. We have a checkbox here, only owner C. So if we uncheck that, compile save, and test again, let's see, we have we can see both clients. We can't see the gun or anything like that. So let's go to our FP gun, uncheck only owner C, compile save. I need to get rid of these components, so we'll do that here soon too. And now we should see the gun, like so. We can see that, we can see the animation on that playing just as normal. However, when I shoot, Nothing is happening on, e on the opposite client slash server, only for ourselves. So if we come over here and look at our code, our beginner multiplayer character dot 
cpp and i'm going to open up our header file as well because i want to clean some junk out here in a minute when we go to shoot we left click it calls on fire and our on fire function again this is running strictly on the client it's going through and it's trying to one it just checks if the projectile class is null well not null then it goes through get the world and then we will find well we will get the location of our actual muzzle so the end of our barrel same thing with the rotation and we will spawn the projectile now the projectile already has stuff built into it such as uh, impulse and all that so if we go over here to view the projectile projectile movement initial speed is at 3000 units per second so like i think that's what it goes off of so like 3000 centimeters a second or something like that so it's already set up and it's you know it's having its impulse now when the server does this and spawn actor occurs on the server that as long as the actor is set to be replicated it should be there for the rest other clients as well so if we come over here and click open up our first person projectile blueprint class and if we just scroll down to replication we can see replicates is unchecked it's false so if we set this to true, compile save, I load up and play again. Here I will shoot on the client, and nothing happens. But if I come over here and shoot on the server, as you can see on the client at the uh, left side of the screen, the client sees the projectile that the server is shooting. That's due to how everything kind of trickles down with replication. So as always, you want the server to be authoritative. So whenever you want to spawn an actor and you want other clients to see it, you want to make sure that is happening on the server. If it happens on the client, it's only going to be known and local to the client that tried to spawn it. So when the client goes and shoots, you know, he performs on fire by shooting and it spawns the projectile, it's only happening on the client. The server knows nothing at all about it. So what we would do to resolve this is we would use a server RPC. So as the client, we would want to say to the server, using a server RPC, which we'll get into in a little bit, uh, probably in, actually in the next video, hey, I am trying to shoot. So I want you, here's my well, this is the way I would do it anyways. Here is my current muzzle's location and rotation from when I tried to shoot. And I would send that information to the server using that server RPC. And then the server would do whatever it needs to do to validate that information. So you would do, you know, we're not going to do this, obviously, some basic checks. So, for example, let's pretend that I'm the client right now. And I want to make sure that the location and rotation that was sent to me from the client is right here within X distance of the actual muzzle or barrel of the weapon that we're trying to use. So that way you could prevent some cheating. So for example, if we uh, decided to cheat and call that function somehow, we'd just say, okay, we're going to spawn our projectile with a location of where my camera is all the way up here. And we're going to do some calculations in our cheat to find out the rotation required to hit this cube. We could send that information to the server and it would fire projectile from up here and hit this cube. So we could do that even if our player was all the way behind this and couldn't see the cube. So that's what you would prevent there by doing those checks. Obviously, we're not going to be doing those. Now this video, this is a very basic tutorial little series thing. So that's the way we would get around that. So if everything succeeds, so the information that the client passed in in regards to the barrel's location and rotation is within our tolerances, meaning it's good to go, inside that server RPC, we would use spawn actor. We would go ahead and spawn the projectile using the passed in location and the passed in rotation. And that will allow the server to actually spawn the projectile. So 
hopefully that was a uh, good explanation and I'm going to be breaking these videos up into parts and trying to release them together so first comes the explanation and in the next video we come out with the implementation of it so if you like this format please let me know because I'm just trying it out right now so I'm going to go ahead and end the video here uh, actually let's go ahead and remove some of the bloat code that we don't need just to simplify this class so let's go to our character.h we're going to find our anything related to vr we're just going to get rid of so our vr gun to vr muzzle location gone our motion controllers gone our check before using a motion controller gone on reset vr gone everything relating to the touch data structure gone and enable touchscreen movement is also gone now we have to do the same thing in our dot cpp so starting from the top in our constructor here starting on line 63 we remove our motion controller related stuff everything related to our vr gun and vr muzzle location we get rid of inside of begin play we have a check if we're using motion controllers and all that kind of stuff we can actually get rid of this entire if else it is not needed we scroll down to our setup player input component we have our enable touchscreen movement our reset vr that's it for those two then our on fire function we have if be using motion controllers we do this otherwise we do this we want to get rid of the if statement so remove the if else and the closing bracket and go ahead and cannot remember what the hotkey was to reformat it but just make it look nice and clean keep scrolling down we have our functions that we remove so remove on reset vr begin touch and end touch as well as this giant commented out function like so Go down further and we have our enable touchscreen movement we've removed that as well and that should be everything related to vr so now we just have a very simple character class so i'm going to go ahead and let this compile and i'm just going to remove some comments and minimize some stuff that i don't really think needs to be seen oh we can also remove some of the includes so we're not using our motion controllers remove that include we're not using our head mounted display we remove that include and that's it so anyways that's all that's going to be done in this video and in the next one we will actually go about implementing everything that i talked about regarding our projectile and the well we're going to do yeah literally everything i talked about so we're going to try to get our projectile when the client shoots we're going to get it to spawn on the server so that other clients can see it. So that's pretty much it, as well as some other stuff. So, for example, if I set this to three clients, play, I want to just do a quick little C here. So, just, yeah. Okay, never mind. That was just for myself. Anyways. We will uh, continue in the next video by actually implementing it. So as always, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, there is a link to my Patreon in the description below, as well as if you have any questions or anything like that, there will be a link to my Discord server down there too, with a dedicated channel to this series. So feel free to ask any questions or ask for assistance on anything related to this kind of stuff that you need help with, and I or someone else will try to really help you out and get you understanding whatever it is you're struggling with. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Take care.